In this episode, we're going to take this Stumac 335 kit from this into this. Hey everybody, this is Matt. Thanks for watching another episode in our um, Stumac 335 kit build. Today, as I showed you in the um, in the little teaser video part, uh, I have a different shirt on and uh, the guitar is going to look very different from what it looks like now because we're going to hand it off to Chris and he is going to do some super cool paint work on it. I have no idea what he's going to do but it's all sanded, uh, the sealer's all sanded, and it's all basically ready to receive paint. That is to say, it's ready to get prepped for paint. So um, I'm gonna hand it off to Chris, and he is going to take care of that. And this is gonna be a really fun video. In fact, this might be the most fun video in the series. All right, let's give it over to Chris. In the last video, we shot it with our sealer coats, and in between that video and this video, I sanded it, honestly thinking that we were probably going to have to do more sealer and as it turned out we don't so you guys don't have to watch me sand but basically what I did was I sanded everything with 320 grit sandpaper uh, and knocked and, and got everything perfectly perfect in every way so some people are gonna go I thought you said not to sand it that was the raw wood. Yeah, that's right. Now it's now is time to sand it, and that was the, actually the first time that we sanded the body. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, so I sanded it with uh, 320 grit sandpaper, and now we're going to wipe it off with naphtha and mask it off. We are going to use blue tape on the fingerboard, and I'll do that first because that's going to stay on the whole time. And then I'm going to mask off the binding and I'll mask off the side of the binding. A lot of times I'll mask off the top of the binding, but on this guitar, the, the binding is a little bit thinner than what we normally do, so I built a new little scraper tool and we're gonna scrape it back. Here's my awesome little scraper tool. Ooh, it's adjustable, so you can it make it. It is adjustable. So yeah, we'll see how that works. I think it's gonna work pretty well. So let's get started. So this is naphtha? This is naphtha. Uh, auto parts stores sell it as, this is final wipe and anti-static cleaner. Um, it's grease remover, but it really, I think it's naphtha. Um, and, and, and the reason to do this is to get any grease that I may have gotten on it, off it, and I realize I'm touching it with my hand. Uh, before we spray, I'll wipe it all down again. But I did also just wash my hands. This is just to make sure the tape sticks better? Yeah, I do this before you tape to make sure that the tape stays. Because little pieces of tape don't always want to stick. Are you going to paint, or are you going to leave the F-holes bound, or? Uh, yes, but I think I am going to, rather than try and mask even the sides of those, I'm going to scrape those completely. That way, if I can't do it, I can just put a little more paint on back <laughs> on it and call it good. Okay. So we're going to mask the front board just like we did last time. Chris, did I tell you that I talked with... Um, uh, Allie and Brock from Stu Mac about this project and they were both really excited about it. Yeah, you did tell me that. That's cool. They were especially interested in the UV cure paint. Yeah? Yeah. It's pretty neat. We're doing our 73 finish on this, right? Um, I don't know. I think we are. Do you know what color you're going to do? Uh, yeah. But they'll have to watch. Let me guess. Or fast forward. It's gonna be that that um, two tone Gretsch green and light green. That's a great call. I actually really like that color, but uh -huh. I don't think this is gonna be. I we had a, so a lot of viewers yeah. said, "Tradition be damned." Go with something. Uh huh. I, I don't remember what they said, and a lot of people said go with traditional. So yeah, and I think um, for what we have planned for this guitar, I think we should probably do traditional. Yeah, that's right. We do have something planned for this guitar, and uh, we're not going to tell you guys about it until later. 
But I guarantee you, you do not have any idea what we're going to be doing. Isn't that right, Chris? Um, it's going to be yeah, kind of I a think, shock. I think, I think that's probably true. Yeah. What was that? Uh, do we want to leave the headstock, like burst the headstock, or I just gave away what we're doing, um, or do we want to paint it black? Well, I don't know. I mean, the of all the pieces of veneer, that one's probably some of the nicest stuff, uh -huh. which, again, it's veneer. It doesn't really matter, but I think it'd be cool to leave it. Okay. What do you, what do you, I mean, what's your guts that tell you? It's easier to leave it. Okay, let's do that. Not then. much, but I don't have to mix up any black or get a get out the black. Okay, cool. So there's that, and now I'm going to mask off the neck binding using orange quarter-inch vinyl tape. I want to mask it right to the right to the line, or a little bit above it. Boy, I'm doing a poor job of it. Let's try that again. Why is it always harder when the camera is rolling? Okay, now we got that the fingerboard masked off. We are going to now mask the sides. I usually start here and work my way around. I like to use just one piece of tape. Chris, what do you say to people who are going to inevitably chime in with, you're supposed to scrape that? Yeah. Um, I don't like to scrape it. I think it takes longer to scrape it than it does for me to mask it. I can do a better job. The other thing about scraping is... It's sort of paint specific, isn't it? Well, yeah, there's that, but there's also um, the idea that if you, if you go too far and you scrape into the, the wood, it's, it's hard to go back and touch that stuff up. So I get a little bit more consistent results doing it this way. I think that even Gibson, um, when they do like Pelham Blue, they mask that stuff. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I, I bet you that the the only time that they scrape stuff is sunburst. Uh huh. Um, yeah. And I don't know. And Someone's gonna chime in on that like too. Shellac than it's super than fine. Point. Is what I know. Yeah. Yeah. From what I understand. But yeah, if they're using a metallic paint, I. I almost can guarantee they're masking the, the binding. Yeah, so, and we're gonna scrape the uh, top edge of this. All right, so I got the sides masked off, but there's, uh, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bit of tape sticking up past it, which is gonna slow down my, uh, my bursting. So I'm gonna exacto knife that off flush with the body. And then scrape it after. Yeah, after. and then we'll scrape the top after we're done. So, so that's another reason to use this vinyl tape, isn't it? Uh huh. Yeah, and it doesn't bleed through, so yeah. So it'll be something like that. So this is like electrical tape. Yes? Yes, it is. Would you say that you should not use this as an electrical tape and to not use electrical tape in place of this? Um, sure. I don't know why you'd want to use this as electrical tape. I'm just saying. I have used electrical tape um, to mask before. Okay, so I got the top masked off and the edge trimmed off, so now I'm going to do the back. Same deal. Yeah, how many times have you uh, have you masked binding before? A lot, a lot. So a lot times the charm. Uh huh. But I've never masked a three thirty five before. It's way different. It's bigger in the butt. Yeah, it's a it's a long lap around. Let me tell you. Double cutaways. This would be better if the three thirty five was a no cutaway. Yeah, yeah. Well, that better. Sense. It'd be easier if the 335 were a no cutaway. Uh-huh. Chris, where can people get that shirt? This shirt? Yeah. On our Teespring page in the link below.
it's all masked off so now we're going to attach our holder to it and I'm going to put a hook in the back and then I'll wipe it down one last time with the uh, naphtha. Chris, someone was asking in the comment section of the previous video where we got those sticks. They uh -huh. inquired, are they custom made? Uh -huh. And they were like, where can I get one? Uh -huh. And the answer is, yes, they are custom made. Uh, I don't know the guy who made them. And, uh, but I... But I know that I'm not selling any of the ones that we have. So. We only have five, which is the perfect amount for us. Yep. Except we're going to need something. We're going to need another one coming up. You could contact um, Bill Hendricks at Spin Twist. I think he's got some stuff like that, doesn't he? Um, his don't have the bend in them. His just go straight out. But he could probably bend it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think what's that that uh, place that has. Like like makers. Oh, um, I don't know, but but I do know that that piece of bent conduit came from Home Depot. Uh huh. You can just buy forty five or ninety degree bends of conduit, and then you can put a you can put a plate on your own, or you can paint it a different way. All right. Got to be careful not to get too close to the tape because this stuff will actually soak under the under the tape and and take it off. So. Watch yourself. Someone was asking, why don't we just leave it as is? And I said, due to the nature of the uh, neck laminate, um, I can't. Or, or I, I had an aesthetic problem with that. And they're like, well, I guess I can't see that. So I'm going to zoom in real quick here. That right there is, you know, uh, the neck, eh, the neck, and then a block to make it a little fatter, and then my, uh, my cover plate. And... and I mean, it looks fine, but I think it's going to look a lot better when it's all um, when it's all painted. And I just touched it. Great. Your, your, pre, your previously degreased. There you go. Thank you. If I wouldn't have said anything, it would have been fine. Something could have. Ow, could have. I don't happened. think either one of us are greasy enough today. Okay. So after you get it all wiped down, uh -huh. we're going to do the cool stuff in the booth. Yep cool. So Chris, now it's time to choose the color. Yes. So I mixed up some intercoat clear. It's base coat clear. Uh, it's just a two part thing. Uh, one part paint, one part urethane reducer. And I'm going to split these up a little bit because we're going to do two colors. What colors are you going to do? I think we're going to do a kind of tobacco brown and put a little red into it and uh, amber. We're going to spray the brown first, and then we will spray amber at the end. So um, let's talk a little bit about how are you going to do the, uh, how is the burst going to be? Is this going to look exactly like a Gibson? No, it's going to look uh, like something I painted. Um, I don't really care for that tear burst, or yeah, that teardrop sunburst thing that, that Gibson does, mm -hmm. uh, and I know why they do it. Why do they do it? Because it's fast. Okay. Um, but since it's the only guitar I'm painting today, I can take a few extra minutes and, and go around the edges like I normally do. Sure, if you had lots and lots to do. Yeah. You wanna, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They go. Okay. So. And uh, I think a lot of people think that maybe you should do the dark color second. Why do you do it first? I like to do it because then you can... Uh, you can see the contrast and how much amber you need, and I think it gives it a little bit softer look. I'm not a, a yeah, big seems... fan of sunbursts that have a fairly crisp line. I like to fade it in a little bit yeah. more. Uh, so that's why I do it cool. second. But you can do it however you want. So you're mixing in the uh, Stu Mac. Um, what yeah. is that? That's the amber? Uh, no, this is the tobacco brown. Tobacco brown, okay. Yeah. And it's going to have a couple different colors in it. Um, we got some brown, we put just a little bit of red into it. Okay. Because I like what it does on the edge. So you're going, you've got a formula for this, right? And it's exactly the same yeah, every exactly time? exactly the same every time. <laughs> um, the neat thing about these stains is, Wait. these dyes, <laughs> it says liquid stain on the bottom. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah. Um, but, uh. 
One of the neat things about them is the colors always turn out about the same, no matter how much or how little stuff you put in. It just matters how many coats you put on it. Yeah. You know, it'll get darker and darker, but the tobacco brown is usually tobacco brown. And I found that it takes a lot more dye than you would expect it to. Yeah, as soon as you get it to where the, the, the inner coat clear or the lacquer or whatever it is you're mixing the dye with, you, it'll look brown right away or red yeah. or green, mm -hmm. but it won't be the color that you're expecting until you get a bunch of that dye in there. Correct. And this is a little bit of black. I'm just going to add a couple of drops of black just to darken it up a tad. Okay. The other thing is you have done a bunch of these, so you have an idea of how much color to add to that mm -hmm. much, that much um, mid coat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm using, I keep using words inner coat clear, mid coat, lacquer. This is basically the color coat. Whether yes. you are spraying automotive, um, you, you know, a uh, uh, shoreline gold or something, a metallic with, with that you got at the auto parts store. Yeah. Or if you're mixing your own color, uh -huh. you got sealer, then this, and then clear is going to go over the top of it. Yes. All right, so there's the amber. That's vintage amber. Okay. And we're going to probably want to make it fairly dark um, because we don't want the top to look yellow. We want it to look amber. Okay. You know, Jeff says that uh, you should use a bunch of this stuff. Use as much of use as much of that dye bath as you as you possibly can. Yeah. When you're mixing your color coats. Why is that? Jeff says he likes to sell a bunch of it. Yeah. Plus Jeff is cool. Yep. And yeah. one day if I ever learn to make acoustic guitars, it's gonna be from Jeff. There you go. That looks pretty good, I think. Actually I'm gonna put just a tad more in it because I know how this works. So you got a lot of, uh, a lot of paint there, uh -huh. but that's a big, big guitar, huh? It is, and I don't mind having a little bit left over. Yeah. These are colors that we use all the time. I didn't have any. Um, I wouldn't have used leftover anyway, because we wanted to talk about how you do it. Mm -hmm. Woo! Is that right? Yeah, it looks is that, good. Is that how you like it? Yeah. Um, but I don't. I could put a lid on it and keep mm -hmm. it for a little while. It doesn't last forever, but you know it'll last better part of a week. All right, and then I've got two guns. I'm going to put the dark color in this one. I'm going to strain it. How come you have to strain it? Uh, just in case there's any. In case there was any frogs in there before? Yeah, any, any little little blobs of stuff, okay. especially with the way that I keep paint cans not very clean. You can occasionally, I actually strained the clear into that too um, when I did it. But anyway, you don't want to have, yeah, you don't want a little ball of goo to wreck your project. And what do you got there, like a, just a detail gun? Uh, yeah, that's a detail gun that I got from Amazon, top end. Um, what did I do with my lid? Whoa. What's the big idea looking at through the uh, through the lid there? Uh, you want to make sure that the hole in the top isn't blocked. That hole? Uh-huh. That's how the the gun gets air. Okay. Or that's how the it, it keeps pressure in the not pressure. You don't want to vacuum. Equal right? pressure, correct. Yeah, it will stop spraying paint if that hole gets plugged. Okay. Alright, and then this gun. That's a fancy one. And this one, yeah, this is a Rich 8 gun. It is a fancy gun. We got that one from Mike Learn, right? We did, yeah. Yep. We paid big boy money for that paint gun, we as did, I recollect. Yeah. yeah. All right, and I think we are ready. Are you ready, Matt? I'm ready.
are the next day and we're going to strip all the masking off it. Right at the end of the day, Matt and I decided that we preferred the look of a black headstock, so we went ahead and painted that black. Uh, one of the reasons was because it's a mahogany neck, it's not a maple neck, so there shouldn't really be any figuring on the headstock. Um, so we painted it black. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the stick and then I'll start unmasking and then we'll scrape binding. Is there a trick to removing the masking? Yes, there is. So this stuff, not so much of a trick, just sort of pull it off. But when you're removing the tape that is up against your, your edge that you want to keep nice, the trick is to pull it back on itself. You know, so like at a 90 degree angle or slightly more and go slow. And I can't see what it looks like. I hope it looks good. Looks really good from this side. Okay, good. I figured it would. Now I get to see what it looks like on this side. Hachi machi. So this binding is more white than cream, but more off-white than white, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. All right, now we're going to do the. You want to come over here? Yeah, I'll, you just do how you're going to do, and I'll, I'll okay. try to get in there. Oh man! So sometimes it's hard to get this stuff started. There we go. So it's going to look a little rough on the on the top. So we trimmed it back. I can't get any. <laughs> That's all I'm getting is arm. I'm just going to go back here. All right, go, go, keep going. No, no, no. Do it, do like how you would normally do it. I would normally do it like this. <laughs> Sorry. I think it's okay. I think this everyone's going to get an idea. This is why um, they call being left handed being wrong handed, is because when you film, nothing turns out. There you go. So I think that looks pretty darn clean. Yeah, I think it looks good. Good. Okay. If there's any overspray or if the tape came loose or anything like that, we can always go back with a razor blade and touch it up. Then we get to do this side. So sometimes it helps to remember how you masked it. Here, I'll just put the camera right there. Sorry. You ready? Yeah, yeah. I think I think that gives everyone an idea of yeah, what's happening it's, here. It's, ma it's unmasking. Yeah, it's pulling off tape. Uh-huh. I forgot that we were scraping the top. Mm hmm So that's what we're going to do next, right? That is what we are going to do next. All right. And I am going to start on the back. So the back's all scraped. I used my my new little <laughs> my new little scraper tool that I made yesterday out of a piece of dowel and a razor blade, and it's got a set screw in it so I can adjust it. And before we started masking yesterday, I actually adjusted the razor blade for the uh, width of the binding. So I don't have to worry about going too far. I also used just a regular razor blade, something that I, I realized as I was scraping this is that this binding has a slight round over on it. And because it's so thin, when I, when I do this, it does a really good job of establishing the, the depth of the binding, the thickness of the binding, 
but it won't scrape all of it because it's rounded over, so I had to go back with a regular razor blade and scrape that. All right, Chris, there are going to be people who ask, what about that guy who works for Gibson who uses bits of old bandsaw blades to scrape with? Yeah, um, I was thinking about him when I was doing it. Uh, I think this is one of those things where the longer you practice, the better you get at it. I don't have any bits of old bandsaw blade, so I'm using razor blades. Um, and it just takes a little bit of time. I think it took me probably 15 or 20 minutes to do the back side. But I was also getting used to it. The front side will go faster. So basically, use whatever you want. I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, is there a wrong way to scrape? I think the only wrong way to scrape is if you scrape too far. Yeah. All right, so, let's show how they let's right. show them how you do it. All right. Whoop. So I take this and you have to hold it square. Hold on, let me let me change. You want to get over there? Yeah. There you go. So you have to hold this square to the body and you just sort of start and see the nice line it puts in there. All right, let's get in there and you can. Okay. I'm sure everybody can see that, right? Yeah, sure, what okay. the heck. <laughs> I had two okay. razor blades. One of them was good and one of them was bad. Okay, and now I can go really, really short and just clean off the rest. So at this point, all you're doing is just getting rid of the paint that didn't get taken off by the yeah. The little tool. Okay. Yeah, I can't see in the light. Um, oh, am I, am I but, in your way? Well, no, it's just. Yeah, and then the rounded edge is just you just got to keep kind of going back and forth on it till you get all of it off. All right. So you just take your time and do yep. a good job, right? Yeah, take your time and do a good job. Yeah, okay. It's that easy. All right. So I'm all scraped. All my binding is scraped. Uh, I scraped the f holes. If I had those to do over, I know originally we said I, I didn't want to mask them off, but if I had it to do over, I would mask off the insides of them. That would make scraping them a little easier. Uh, and then scraping the outside, I actually did a really light bevel and just kept scraping until it was about the same width all the way around. Uh, that was pretty tricky. Uh, then what else? Oh, okay. So the next step is I'm going to, there's a little bit of a, a paint ridge right here, so I'm going to take some like 800 grit and just barely touch that and smooth that over. I'll do that on the sides and the side of the neck, and then we're going to put a couple of logos on. How long did it take you to scrape the binding? Uh, all of it, probably a little over an hour. Okay. Um, I got a lot better as I went along. So... This is, this is kind of one of those make or break things, though, right? Like, I think so. Yeah, um, I took my time and I wanted it to look right. I think it actually turned out really, really good. I'm happy with it. Um, like, like we talked about earlier, usually I'll mask it off and then I'll do a little bit of touch up uh, or kind of evening out. This was a little bit different in, in all cases. We show the back a little bit. So I don't know if the 335 from Gibson has back binding. I'd imagine it does. I think it does, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Cool. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of uh, sandpaper, 800 grit, and wipe down, and then some logos. This decal will give everyone kind of an idea of what's happening with this guitar, huh? It is going to, yes. Okay, so now what do you do? So now, put the stick back on it, fill the F holes with uh, some paper towels so we don't get paint in there. One last wipe off and it's time for clear. All right gang, we are in the paint booth and Chris is about to apply our 73 finish to this. Now, 73 finish is actually the top coat that we use. It's a proprietary blend that um, uh, is exclusive to us. If you want 73 finish, you have to get it from us. 
Um, I'm not going to show you how to do it. I'm not going to show you what's in it. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. But you're going to have to figure it out, or you can just have us do it. Isn't that right, Chris? That's right. Okay, you ready to do this? Yep. Would you don't even have your mask. Fan? Huh? Would you hit the fan? Yep. Gang, let me tell you, it sure was fun watching Chris do all the paint work on this, and man, it turned out super, super cool. So for those of you who were wondering what exactly we were going to be doing with this guitar, we're actually sending it back to Stuart McDonald. Um, there was a handful of things that we could have done with it, but we thought that uh, for them to use it as a, a promotional tool would be a great idea, and, uh, uh, and you know what? Stuart McDonald agrees. So what they're going to do with it Lord only knows, but check it out. Um, so in the uh, in the next video, which is going to be a little while because we've got a workshop uh, next week, so I can't um, I can't do a bunch of videos on assembling this guy. But um, but uh, get a load of that right there. See, so the back of this uh, the back of this neck is going to have have some TTG on there. But um, uh, yeah, this turned out really great, you guys. So um, remember, if you want to get your own um, Stuart McDonald 335 uh, kit and, and build one with us, link in the description below, and it'll take you right to the, uh, the Stu Mac page and, uh, for the 335 kit. And you know what? I think they're super cool. And if you, do, uh, if you do a good job like Chris, yours could look like this, or you could do one in Pelham Blue or whatever color you wanted. And um, yeah, so let me, let me back up. Get a load of this. Excelente. So, uh, like I said, in the in the coming videos, we're going to be doing assembly, and we're going to be using all the parts that came with the kit. Um, uh, if you guys want to upgrade your own, well, you can do that too. But uh, again, this one's going back to Stuart McDonald, um, so that uh, they can use it for promotional purposes and help them sell their kits too. So, uh, gang, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me the old thumbs up. If um, uh, if you appreciate this kind of content, hit the like button, or even better, if you want to go over to our Patreon page and, uh, and become a donor, uh, you can, you know, even a buck a month, guys, goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat stuff like this. And of course, special thanks to Stuart McDonald who provided us with the kit so that we could bring this kind of cool stuff to you. Um, you can also join us on YouTube. There's a little join button. And like I said, there's uh, even a buck a month goes a long way. Uh, but if you can't do that, Please, uh, like I said, like the video, share the video, tell all your friends about the video, and um, help us grow our channel that way. Because I think stuff like this is pretty neat, and uh, you guys seem to be uh, uh, enjoying it as well. And I really appreciate all the comments that you guys have um, for this video, uh, you know, and, and telling us about your experiences building similar kits or, or exactly this, this same 335 kit from Stu Mac. One guy was like, I can't wait to see what you guys do with the frets. Um, so yeah, that's going to be in the next video, whenever that is, but man, I tell you what guys, this, uh, this paint job sure does look cool. Oh, this is our 73 finish. Uh, in case anyone was wondering, um, this is our proprietary finish. And I think, I think that for those of you who go, you know what? I sure would like to put one of those Stumac kits together, but I don't have a paint booth and I don't have a bunch of tools. We might have something uh, coming up for you guys where we can help you out with that. Um, and we're going to be doing that in conjunction with Stuart McDonald. I can't tell you anymore. You'll just have to wait and see. Or you can start guessing, but I'm not going to be able to help you out with that. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Tobes Guitars reminding you that if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. This kit has been super fun and it looks killer, guys. So we'll see you next time and uh, thanks for watching. I'm gonna play my guitar,